Hi everyone, hope you're all staying safe and well. Welcome to the Citizen Channel. And today we have a Moments in Time. So join me for this little Moments in Time. And it's uh, to do, it's April, it's the month of April I'm doing this. So obviously it's always, always the crux of a season, isn't it? And uh, if you know about April, sometimes there's something called uh, an FA Cup semi-final takes place in April. So we've not had so much, we've had quite a few lately, haven't we? But uh, obviously going back in the day, I'm going back to 1981, which was... Uh, perhaps our last one for a long, long time, wasn't it? The 11th of April 1981, when we took a little trip down to Villa Park. This was my first ever, ever FA Cup semi-final uh, visit. I'd been to League Cup semi-finals, but I'd never been to an FA Cup semi-final. And this was City's first for 12 seasons, of course. Obviously, we'd been to Villa Park in 1969, and that's a, uh, I was a bit young for that one. I remember, obviously, following it on... It was, certainly wasn't on TV live, I don't think. I would have probably followed on the radio or, or whatever means I could at the age of 10 whatever whatever method I could so obviously we, we, it was going to be another 12 seasons wasn't it, it was going to be the April 81 before we, we contested another FA Cup semi-final of course uh, City were the underdogs in this one um, we weren't, uh, weren't expected particularly to win it because we lined up against a treble chasers, a treble chasing team even at that stage in April of the Ipswich Town there you go Ipswich Town and say Say all these people talk about clubs and history, don't they? But uh, Ipswich Town have got a, a good little history as well, and uh, people sort of forget about that in this day and age because they're not up in the Premiership, etc. But uh, please join me today as we look back on this little trip to the Midlands and. Uh, Let's have a look. Well, perhaps what I'll chip in with, perhaps what I got up to, what I can remember of it. I was probably a bit drunk most of the day, to be honest with you. So <laughs> I, can, I can remember the sheer joy. We'll talk about that later. But join, join me as we look back at 11th of April, 1981, Ipswich Town versus Manchester City, the FA Cup semi final at Villa Park. Please, if you're new to the channel, please push that subscribe button. If you enjoy what you see, please push that notification button so you know these vlogs are coming out. Of course, I do these history vlogs and city present quizzes, uh, magazines vlogs loads of different things as you know so please check those out and you'll also see some if you're new you'll probably see some film and tv stuff as well i have a little film and tv channel where i do movie and drama reviews information vlogs on there as well so if that's of any interest to you or perhaps you know someone who might be interested please point me in my direction that'd be most appreciated uh, if you want to follow or friend me on facebook and twitter there's a couple of links on screen and I do follow and friend everyone back. I do check every three or four days and follow and friend everyone back on there. And all comments, if you were there at Villa Park and you remember more than me, perhaps uh, I think most City fans of, of my age, I mean, I was, I was what, 22 then, uh, were probably in a bit of a stupor, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, I was sort of, uh, my, my first daughter was um, about four or five months away from being born. So I was still enjoying a bit of a uh, bit of freedom at that stage. So, yeah, I was... Uh, yeah, a little bit merry. Let's let's just say that day. I, I certainly remember that. So let me know in the comments if you were there. What, what memories you have of it? Of course, we all remember the wonderful free kick by Paul Power, etc. Uh, but just let me know. And any comments are welcome. If you can't leave us a comment, please just give us a little thumbs up. Right, here we go. So yeah, it was it was only five seasons, wasn't it, since uh, we'd been to Wembley? Obviously, the seventy six uh, League Cup final actually contested that. But uh, in those days, to us City fans, it did seem quite a while. Five years. I mean, <laughs> little little were we to know what was going to happen after that. But uh, it did feel like a long time in those days, like it would now. Let's face it, if we started going five, six years now between visiting our second home, we would start to feel a bit weird, wouldn't we? Even though, obviously, you get the benefit of semi-finals there now. Um, yeah, and it was... Uh, we had a team there that just a year before had literally had its soul ripped out uh, by the returning uh, once hero, of course, uh, Malcolm Allison had actually sort of had us, had us on our sort of uh, not our last legs because we've had uh, plenty of those over the years and we've come back but uh, obviously a year before that any any thought of a glory within 12 months of getting you know potentially to a Wembley final or two perhaps we'll talk about that in a moment would seem a long way off I mean uh, the FA Cup run and a League Cup run that season under of course John Bond we love you that's a famous song if you know but John Bond we love you John Bond we do anyway we'll have no more we'll have no more of that uh, yeah it was uh, a welcome return for us City fans seemingly I say we've, we've been knocking on the door certainly in the league uh, for a 
for a few seasons. But uh, just to the top table, you know, obviously the League Cup run and the FA Cup run. We had to put the disappointment, though, of course, of the League Cup semi-final defeat to the back of our minds. And it's sort of faded by then, although... The defeat at the hands of Liverpool and referee Alf Gray, because he did, he did just as much as Liverpool to knock us out of that trophy, um, sort of did take some getting out of our minds. But we had a second chance, didn't we? We had a second opportunity to get into Wembley, so that was great. So we did follow. We did follow the great run of the FA Cup. I went to every every single game that that season, including all the replays uh, for the FA Cup. So that's. I think one of the only seasons where I managed to do that, to be honest with you. As I say, I sort of snuck that in before my daughter was born. So, hey, that was uh, sort of well-timed by City, wasn't it? And uh, that was pretty good. Uh, yeah, and as we got to the semi-final, of course, the four teams involved were uh, City, Wolves, Spurs, of course, and uh, Ipswich. And, of course, the only team most teams wanted to avoid was Ipswich. And uh, we didn't have the luck of the draw in those days. You know, like we, we get all the easy draws now, don't we, in the, in the draws for the... Uh, rounds but uh, yeah we we got the short straw we got Ipswich and let's and most teams didn't want Ipswich to be honest with you. the Wolves didn't want Ipswich Spurs didn't want Ipswich we certainly didn't want Ipswich but they came out of the hat so it was Ips, Ipswich we got uh, but uh, there you go it was with confidence though I think the fairly amount of confidence that certainly wasn't any trepidation that uh, thousands of City fans of course made that trip down the M6 to, to Villa Park uh, so Mr John Bond, our manager then, was to lock horns, of course, with the Ipswich manager, the, the legend himself as well, uh, Bobby Robson. So those two guys were in interesting uh, managing pair, those two. Uh, we'd already met Ipswich twice that season. Uh, we'd drawn at home, it was not a total disaster, but we had lost at Portman Road, unfortunately. But uh, we did have a small advantage in that uh, we did have a sort of week's rest between our last game and the FA Cup semi-final. But Ipswich, uh, obviously in this bid to win a treble, one of, one of the competitions they were still in with the, was the UEFA Cup. Uh, so they'd ha actually played in midweek in, in quite a hard fought battle in the, in the UEFA Cup semi-final first leg against uh, FC Cologne and they'd actually beaten uh, FC Cologne but uh, obviously we got those extra days rest so that was that was good that was a good sign I said they, they were a good team at Switch but it's like anything you know it still takes uh, takes uh, you know a lot of fitness etc from players to sort of cope with sort of high level games especially which they both were of course uh, of course, we would line up in our lucky red and black stripes, of course, uh, which had done as well over time, hadn't they? Um, and the two lineups that day were um, Cities was Corrigan, Ransom, McDonald, Reed, Power, Caton, Bennett, Gow, Mackenzie, Hutchinson, and Reeves. And the sub was uh, Tommy Booth. There you go, he had actually scored, obviously, in that 69 one, didn't he? But he was sub, but he, he was unused in this game. Uh, for it, switch, they had Cooper in net. Yeah, for the next he was, would be a City player at some stage. Mills, Butcher, Tyson, Osmond, Beatty, Walk, Muren, Mariner, Brazil, and Gates. Not a bad little team, that. And their substitute was a guy called McCall. He actually came on for the last three or four minutes of normal time and obviously played during injury time. Uh, a crowd of 46,536, plus me. So 46,537 were in attendance for this one. I'd gone, with a, I'd gone on a minibus with... Um, a friend, but some of his mates, uh, not particularly my mates, but it was obviously we're all city fans together. And I, I was perhaps a bit shyer then than I perhaps was when I got a bit older, but uh, yeah, it, I enjoyed it. I say I didn't have to drive, did I? Got a, obviously, we'd had a, a few cans going down, it was our own minibus, so uh, yeah, I just remember, I just remember sitting outside uh, Villa Park. Uh, I don't think we went any, I don't think we went in a pub as such, but I think I was already, I thought I was already well gone from the, having the beer on the on the minibus going down, and even though it's only like an hour and a bit drive, you know, I probably had about four or five cans. So I don't remember going in any pubs at the, around there, but I, I think we may have bought some beer and just drank it on the streets. I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, we kept well apart. We didn't see really any Ipswich fans outside the ground. It was quite well. Uh, controlled and uh, the two sets of fans were sort of uh, shepherded to different sides of the ground so I don't remember seeing many Ipswich fans at all that day apart from in the ground of course <laughs> uh, but certainly not outside the ground yeah so as I say and it was uh, it was just a matter of meeting up afterwards obviously after the game but the game itself yeah I mean um, Ipswich uh, had looked the better team certainly in the first half and, and that it was pro probably much went as planned but uh, 
any any opportunities that would have been buried perhaps in a league game by uh, people like Brazil and Gates sort of sort of got missed, you know, and they weren't the chances were few and far between. Um, Gow in midfield, Jerry Gow, he was a, he was a, he was a terrier, Jerry Gow. He, he harried Ipswich's ball player, so they had their two Dutchmen, Muren and Tyson, and he sort of gave them no no endless. Uh, he just he just ran for fun and just just harassed them all the time. Didn't give them any time on the ball, and he and even the tough that walk. He was a bit of a unit. This walk guy for Ipswich uh, felt Gow's presence as as he sort of uh, just one guy, but he, he sort of felt like two or three guys when he got started, Jerry Gow. Uh, in the second half, it was a similar sort of thing. Ipswich did have most of the play, but chances were few and far between. Uh, Beatty was a constant threat, certainly in the air. Uh, perhaps, um, and it actually was a lot. It did us a favour because he went off with a shoulder injury. But that was quite late on. He'd had two or three good chances. To, I think I remember Tommy Hutchinson clearing one off the line. I think there are some highlights on YouTube as well. Not not much, not much. Not about three and a half minutes or something like that. But. Uh, yeah, Hutchinson had cleared one off the line and Beattie was a constant threat. But uh, fortunately for City, before before the 90 minutes was up, he actually went off with a shoulder injury. And uh, the final minutes, very cagey, as you expect in the semi-final. No one really wanted to commit. So City had sort of had one or two chances, but we sort of weathered most most of it and uh, most of the pressure from Ipswich. If they did possession stats and stuff like that, I think it would have been well in Ipswich's favour, to be honest with you. But uh, interestingly enough, it was extra time where City sort of upped the game a little bit. It's, uh, again, I think this is to do with the fact that Ipswich had played only three days before and... Uh, we upped our game and Ipswich looked a little bit tired and a little bit bedraggled. And uh, uh, Bennett, obviously Dave Bennett playing for City, he didn't have a great 90 minutes, but he sort of came to life in that extra time. And his extra pace and youth uh, started to worry Ipswich a lot. And uh, it was uh, eventually, he won a series of free kicks. And it was from one of these free kicks, of course, that uh, Mr Paul Power scored that wonder goal that was laid off to him. Well, that was all through uh, Mr. Dave Bennett actually harrowing and hassling around, in and around the box. Uh, of course, the touch by McKenzie made the difference. He wasn't a straight uh, free kick uh, from power. He actually was touched, laid onto him uh, from McKenzie. So it sort of left more of the goal to look at, obviously, around the wall. So, uh, But he saw and struck it beautifully, didn't he? I mean, it, it had no real threat after that, to be honest with you. I don't think, I mean, we were sort of just celebrating, I think, in the end. I mean, the, the Ipswich uh, guys lining up for the second half obviously, obviously had to face the massed ranks of City fans. And I think we were doing a you'll never walk alone I think that's what we did then um, I'm fairly sure we did and there's, uh, there's a couple of there'll be an image on screen and I've got a little paper there celebrate uh, a tribute paper from the evening news there I'm just gonna have a quick look at before we finish so yeah, the Ipswich players had to line up facing that in the second half, and they never quite recovered it. Which you know, they couldn't quite pull it back, and uh, we hung on and could have gone, could have gone two 0 up easily. But uh, yeah, we actually managed to uh, to win through. I mean, obviously, their obvious class. I mean, they did, they were a class team. I very you know, said they had the two Dutch footballers in the middle that used to used to. Uh, create a lot of the stuff uh, and the obvious class was obviously stifled by sheer work rate that day from City and uh, certainly a deserved victory although as I say most people say it's, it's perhaps a little bit unlucky but at the end of the day you've got to put that ball in the onion bag haven't you uh, I think we stayed for as long as we could after the game enjoyed it I mean these things didn't happen very often uh, I'd never as I said I'd never sort of or I had you know the actual FA Cup was always big I mean the League Cup's great but the FA Cup is, is the thing and I, I, I thought enjoyed it it wasn't as it was a semi-final win after all and why not uh, I do remember walking home um, I think I got dropped off near Bellevue and I lived in Abbey Hay Gore and I do remember walking home just singing and shouting you know it was quite late or it was early hours in the morning but I, I just I just remember on my own walking home uh, being highly delighted I think I got in the house and you know, I wanted to sell her, you know, obviously my wife was sort of, oh, oh, well done. But I mean, she didn't understand, she wasn't really into football, but that's that's what you get. So, and I was all on it, all hyper. If, if, if we had the internet in those days, you could have uh, literally gone on and shared your joy, couldn't you? But uh, it was a little bit different in those days. You know what you say, if you didn't have anyone at home to sort of celebrate with, it was all a bit of a bit of a damp squib when you got home and the wife said, oh, all right, very good, uh, there's some... You know, uh, this needs doing tomorrow if you've got a chance to put a shelf up or something like that. So that that's what it's like. But you guys my age will probably know that anyway. But yeah, I did enjoy that walk home. 
of course our luck uh, uh, deserted us a little bit in the final, didn't it? Um, yeah, and even Ipswich have found their treble disappear, even though they had a wonderful season, one of the best seasons ever. Um, they did actually finish second to Aston Villa in the in the title race. I think they were about four points behind, so they did at one stage look as though they may win it. Uh, but they did go on to win the UEFA Cup, so they did very well there. Obviously, we'd knocked them out of the FA Cup. So the treble ended up as a UEFA Cup. So not a total disaster. The UEFA Cup was a, was a big cup, but it was only third ranked behind the uh, European Cup and the Cup Winners' Cup, of course. But, uh, yeah, it was a good season for Villa. They had a good team for a few years at that stage. OK, we'd be back, won't we? We're back in 1986, but, I mean, that doesn't really count, does it? The full, I, don't, I don't count the full Members' Cup, really, as a cup. And, uh, of course, we were back at Wembley in 99, but it wasn't a cup final, was it? It was a playoff final. But uh, it'd be 30 years again before we'd actually uh, reappear in a major cup final. If you told that uh, drunken, drunken lad uh, that walking home from Bellevue to Abbey that it would be uh, 30 years till you'd be going to Wembley again for a cup, for an FA Cup final, then I would have probably laughed at you at that stage. Even even then, as I said, we still, still, uh, still were, a, well, we were always a big club, but still had dreams of actually doing really well at that stage, especially with John Bond. John Bond had, t had turned us round as well. So if you'd said it'd be 30 years, I would have said, go away or words to that effect. Um, just before we go, yeah, the Manchester Evening News, I mean, this is, what, 40 years old, this magazine. I obviously produced a little special. Some of you will probably have that out there. Um, I've put some images up as I've been going through this, but uh, that's a great image, obviously, of Powers Goal there at Villa Park. Yeah, so 20p, the princely price of this one. Some great images, though. Obviously, another angle on Paul Powers at goal and Joe Corrigan celebrating with the... Fans in the opposite end, of course I was in the, the big halt end, but uh, there were City fans in the opposite end as well. Um, so there you go, Joe Corrigan celebrating, of course, uh, another angle there, Paul Powers' goal. You see that? The light's going a bit funny on that one. Uh, an interesting one here, well, obviously that's the manager Gene him up after, you know, for the second... Uh, for injury time, and of course, uh, Mr. Cooper accusing Pat Partridge, the referee, of obviously needing glasses there. That's quite funny. That's a really good, fantastic image. And of course, you've, I've shown it on the screen there, but I've there it is in the paper, in the newspaper, obviously the image of the fans in the in the hall. I was about, I think about halfway up. I remember at half time going down to try and get, by the time I got down to the bottom of this, it was it was sort of, I think the players were coming back out. So I had to just, I had to just literally walk back up. It was a massive end, especially with a lot of fans in it. I mean, not everyone went for a drink sort of thing. So I do, I was probably about halfway up towards the left-hand side, towards the Ipswich fans, to be honest with you. Some more great action images there. Dave Bennett in action, is it? Kevin Reeves as well in action there. Mackenzie, is it Mackenzie? Looks like, yeah, Steve Mackenzie as well. Threatening Paul uh, Cooper there. As I say, he would obviously become our keeper for a while, wouldn't he? I think there's another great image in action, one from the actual semi-final. I think that's a great image there. Kevin Reeves, closer action. Yeah, so that's where we were. So I would have been round the middle up, up towards that, up, to, up towards nearer the... Uh, segregation element next to near the Ipswich fans I always like to do that anyway going, going just for the atmosphere there's a great image on the in the middle obviously of the, of the squad for Wembley fantastic image City glory boys that's sure it's a little bit darker blue there looking in it looks more like Everton than City but uh, yes yeah, uh, wasn't exactly sky blue and I think there's a good picture on the back there of John Bond and uh, Bobby McDonald and, uh, yeah, this, the uh, aforementioned Jerry Gow, of course. So, fantastic celebrating at the end. I say we didn't, uh, it was a shame we didn't get to celebrate more for the final, but uh, there you go. So close in the final, wasn't it? I mean, there's no Tommy Hutchinson there. I think he featured on that that little image before where uh, John Bond was giving his sort of team talk there, but... Uh, yeah, um, so close, so close. But uh, yeah, as far as the moments in time, 11th of April 1981, that was a, a fantastic day for all City fans that were there. And uh, it's to say there are some there are some highlights knocking around, but I've not seen anything major as far as great detail. But then again, <laughs> it wasn't end-to-end -end stuff. I say I've not seen the stats for the game, but uh, as I say, both teams sort of stifled each other, so it, it wasn't sort of end-to-end -end stuff anyway. So. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me for this little moment in time. 11th April, 81, Villa Park, Manchester City 1, Ipswich Town 0. And then we got to another final. What are we going to do this day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. Until we meet again here on the Citizen Channel, perhaps have a look across at the film and TV channel. Whatever it is, all I ever ask is please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.